Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Voices of Recovery. I'm your host, Michelle Ike, and this is my book, How to Kill an Addiction, Recovery with God. In this book, I talk about how to break free from life-controlling issues, and most of us have them, with God's help, as well as 20 powerful testimonies of real people who have done just that. So I'd love for you to check it out. But every week, I interview somebody who is in the fight against addiction, life controlling issues, and more. And today I would like to welcome back to Voices of Recovery, my friend, Debbie. Debbie, welcome back. Hi, hi, Michelle. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you for being here. I know you're a busy lady, but I appreciate (laughs) you taking the time to join us today. So um, not everybody's familiar with you and we'll get to your story here in a bit, but could you just introduce yourself to our audience, please? Sure. Um, My name is Debbie and um, I live in Cincinnati, Ohio. And um, I do, I have married. Um, I have uh, grandchildren, lots of them, great grandchildren, (laughs) a wonderful husband um, and a wonderful career. Um, I do uh, some volunteer work with Women of Alabaster, Celebrate Recovery, um, Church on Fire is my family. So yeah, that's just me in a nutshell. That's where our paths crossed and uh, Mm -hmm. that's awesome. So you were a guest on my show along with your son and it's Mm -hmm. probably been, I I think it was last year. It's been a while. Yeah. And uh, you are now raising your grandchild. So I'd like to talk a little bit about that as well as uh, we're going to discuss the joys and challenges of raising a grandchild. And there are many, many people who are in this situation. So uh, if you could just maybe start off by kind of talking about that situation, how you came into that. Um, And like I said, I wanna encourage people who are in the same boat, right? We know it's it's a growing concern in our country and around the world. So if you could just share a little bit about that, that would be great. Okay, sure. Um, So my grandchildren have always been a huge part of my life. And um, I first, um, many, many years ago, um, actually, let's see, she's, my my granddaughter is now 14. So uh, 13 years ago um, is when I had my first um, attempt in in, in being a full-time caregiver to a grandchild. Mm -hmm. Um, And I fostered two of my grandchildren for a little while. Um, and, um, her, their mother, um, is just amazing, uh, worked really, really hard. And now I get to be grandma, you know, so it's a lot of fun and and have been able to do that for a long time. Um, but my granddaughter that I'm raising now has been a part of my life, of course, a very, um, huge part of uh, of my life since the day she was born. Um, Mm -hmm. and I've been actually having legal custody of her for uh, going on two years. Okay. Um, but, um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of how I got into, let me say my grandchildren have always been a huge part of my life. My oldest one is 20. Um, mm-hmm. and they've always been a huge part of my life as well. So, um, it's, it's how I kind of got to where I'm at now. That, that is beautiful. So mm-hmm. just to kind of give the audience an idea of I just looked up some statistics on this. So 13 million children are being raised by grandparents in this country today. So that means 2.5 million grandparents are raising their grandkids. And 40% of the children who are being raised by their grandparents, that that situation was caused by substance abuse. So because of an addiction, uh, life controlling issue, So, you know, uh, we all know that the enemy makes us want to feel like we're the only one in the world going through something. And sometimes these issues are difficult to discuss because uh, it's just so heavy. But I think it's important for people to realize that they're not alone. One, we're never alone because we have God with us. Amen. Exactly. And then two, we can have a support system of people to encourage us, give us a shoulder to cry on and pray for us and pray for our kids and our grandkids. So what, what do you think about when I read those numbers? I mean, is that surprising to you or not? No, actually it's not. Um, 
it's one of the one, the best one of the best well kept secrets. Actually, there's more of us out there doing it that you can even imagine. It's yeah. like I mean, it's almost in every house. And I look back and I remember living with my grandmother, and um, I really didn't pay a lot of attention to the fact of, that I did that for about a year mm -hmm. um, until I went into the you know some some work with some of the grandparents in that group that I work that I'm with right now. Um, but it's a well kept secret. It, it's and I when I say that it's because. We do it. We know we're all doing it. They're, we know the neighbors down the street are raising their grandkids, but we don't talk about it because okay. we don't want to have to say why. Why, mm -hmm. why are we in this position? That's really good. Well, I'm hoping and praying that this message goes out far and wide to just give a virtual hug to those people who are, yeah. who are doing it. Uh, so you mentioned that you lead a group of, of family members who have children who are struggling with addiction and or raising grandchildren. And you do that through mm -hmm. Celebrate Recovery. So uh, yes. Voices of Recovery is not affiliated with Celebrate Recovery, but many of my guests have been through the program or in the program in, in a mm -hmm. variety of ways. So uh, one thing that people don't realize about it is there are support groups for various types of things. There right. are support groups for people who are coming out of addiction, who are still in it, who are the family members, right? And right. so that's what right. you're doing. So Debbie, if you could talk a little bit about kind of what you're seeing in the group, how you're there for them, uh, mm -hmm. kind of give us an idea of some of the struggles and uh, of course the joys, because let's face it, we love our grandchildren and having them around full time can be a blessing if you if you see it in that light. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about your group and, and just how you support the men and women in it. Okay. Uh, yeah. So there's, as you said, there's a lot of different reasons, variety of reasons why we're, we could potentially be raising a grandchild. Um, mm -hmm. It does lean more towards addiction. Usually there's a child that is struggling with addiction or has succumbed to, to addiction. We also have uh, in our group um, women who are raising grandchildren because of um, mental disorders or um, a parent had passed away unexpectedly. Um, so there's a lot of different reasons, but when you think of a parent, grandparent raising a grandchild, the first thing that comes to your mind is, well, their parent must be, there must be an addiction going on. And I think that's the fear of bringing it out. You the know, stigma. what happened, the stigma that goes with right. it. Um, but these women, um, the strength uh, and courage of these women um, is amazing. And when you see God come in, when they realize, when they, when they find a relationship with the Lord through this, this recovery, um, it, it's, it's, it's just unbelievable. And it, it's, there's no words to explain um, the glory from it, that get, that you get from it, watching yeah. someone go from, because we live in a shell when we're doing this, you know, we're so busy raising our grandchildren, so busy picking up the pieces of right. the damage that has come through, whatever that damage is. Yes. We don't get time to think about ourselves. We don't get time to think about, we don't get to be grandma, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, you think of grandma making the baking the cookies, you know, we don't yeah. get to do that. Yes. We're too busy, you know, doing homework and and right. disciplining and going through teenage years and all this stuff in our, you know, 60s. <laughs> it's, and yes. it's a lot. It's a lot. Mm -hmm. That would be a lot. And I had some friends who, uh, because of a situation with uh, their daughter using and, and getting into some legal trouble over that, did take on their two grandsons. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was a major challenge because... Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not trying to judge anybody. I'm just describing the situation. Uh, they were two young boys who had pretty much had no discipline. Right. You know, and then they have to be the disciplinarians, whereas before they were just the fun grandma and grandpa, right? Right, and, right. Uh, it, it, was, it was extremely taxing for my friends. Uh, they developed some health issues as a result of the stress. And after over a year... Uh, made a very, very difficult decision to send them back into foster care. Right. Uh, but those are tough, those are tough, tough decisions. Yeah. Um, but they knew that for themselves, they had to take care of themselves. And praise God, the boys went to a Christian family and, you know, they're, they're doing well. 
and continuing to pray for the daughter that she would get her life together and be able to, to be a mom again. But as you said, these, these are extremely challenging situations. Yeah. Uh, but with God, he gives us the grace to do what he has called us to do. And uh, my heart goes out to anyone really who doesn't know the Lord because uh, with the challenges that we're facing in our world and just, uh, I just don't know how people did it. And I did it for way too long that. myself. Yeah. But uh, so if there's somebody watching today and you don't know God, if you don't know Jesus, please reach out <laughs> to us. Yeah. Uh, it's as simple as just inviting him in and, and we need his help. <laughs> we need his help. We need his grace uh, because life can be extremely difficult. Right. So, Regarding your granddaughter, is, how old is she? She's a teenager. She's she's twelve. She's twelve. Okay, so mm -hmm. twelve years old, just getting ready to come into that really fun age for girls. Yeah. Thirteen, fourteen. I have yeah. daughters, and and I know what that looks like. So, uh, if you could just speak for her, mm -hmm. what would you say some of the challenges that she is facing? Because let's face it, if you're facing a challenge along with your husband, right? She is too. Exactly. So, if you could speak for her, Debbie, what would you say there's some of the challenges that she's facing in the midst of this situation? Well, I'm really glad you asked that because um, before I started this group, um, I was actually doing Celebration Place, which is for these children that come in oh. to celebrate recovery. Nice. So um, I'll speak for her as well as some of these kids. So um, this is a sensitive uh, situation for them too, because I think they get lost in it, mm -hmm. of what they're feeling. And their feelings are just their little bodies and their little minds can only think about what is they're seeing. And so there's constant challenge. Are you going to leave me too? Are you going to walk mm -hmm. away? Can I count on you? Some of these children have been born in addiction. So they were born addicted. Mm -hmm. um, I have a grandmother who's, who's her children, that's, they were born addicted. Um, these children have seen things um, that no child should ever see. No child. Mm -hmm. um, us as adults and parents to see some of the things that I've seen uh, when I'm on the streets um, ministering with some of the some of these girls and addicts I can't I, I go home in tears sometimes and just in, in heavy prayer like God and oh. these kids see this they seen this right so they worry about so some of the things like with my granddaughter you know they first of all the first thing they do is they want to make excuses but they're going to be okay or but this and they they think of the, the glory of, oh, one day they're going to come home. They're going to have a house. And, and, they, and I think the parents, sometimes they think they're doing the right thing when they're saying, well, I'm working on this and I'm going to get this house and we're going to get this and we're going to do this. And, yes. But it gives false hopes. Yes. And it, it promises that can't, they're unkept. Make it happen. Then tell the child, guess what I got? Not right. this is what I want to do. Because, yeah. you know, they get so caught up in the hope. And then, you know, in in my home, you know, God first, period. God first in this yeah. house. Yeah. Um, I want my granddaughter when she wakes up the morn to see me in the in in the kitchen in my in my prayer room doing my devotions and giving my day first to him. I want to encourage that I want her to see that. Yeah. I want that to have it to see. Um and then, you know, but in their little minds, they think, well, God did so much. Everything's wonderful. And then all of a sudden it all went away again. Why? Mm -hmm. How come? You know, how can I trust it? How can I trust that, you know, that this is really happening? This is working the way it's supposed to work. Right. Um, and it's difficult. And then you become the bad guy, too, because, okay. you know, you know, when you have to make the hard decisions, well, you know, I really don't want you to spend this time right now of you know with the with your parent or you you know i really want to watch what we're what we're doing here right uh, with anything you know questions or decisions or can i do this or can i do that and you got to be the bad guy you yeah. know well you're trying to keep me away you're trying to push me away no i'm trying to protect you and so right. you have to have open conversations with your with these kids that you would not normally have with you know, you're as you're raising your own kids in your own house and you're right. raising your, you know, your children because it, it's not there. So there's harder conversations that are happening with our kids. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, 
I have a child, a, a grandmother who's whose grandson. They know who their their par their their uh, parent passed away from drug overdose. A couple mm -hmm. of them, matter of fact, um, they know who the that they were there. They know that there was a relationship there. There was a mm -hmm. love there. But the grandparent has the parent. They don't understand that. Yeah. They, to them, it's normal. But at the same time, they're older. They start getting. They start seeing other kids, and what is considered normal. It's not, it's like, hmm, you know, how come that's not what my house looks like? Yeah. You need God in this picture, you know, yeah. because there is no yes. normal. You need God in this picture. It doesn't matter if mom's there, dad's there, grandma's there, grandpa's there, or what the situation is. God's there first, and then they, yes. the rest falls in and we got it. Amen. That is beautiful, Debbie. That's so powerful. Amen to that. So, yeah, so I think she deals a lot with um, hope, hanging on to hope. And I told her, you know, I tell her all the time, you know, she said, well, it doesn't matter. Sometimes she'll have a meltdown. You know, mm -hmm. they don't care. Why don't they care? Why don't they care? They do care. They love you. They right. love you, but they need to learn to love themselves. They love you enough to make sure you stay where you're at yes. because they know they can't. Mm -hmm. So you know, don't give up hope. You got to remain hopeful because that's what God says when you do trust in the Lord. Right. And I have to teach her that, but don't get your hope up yeah. for tomorrow because kids see in the present. They don't see in the future. Right. I prayed for my, my son for 20 something years. I had a, I had a revelation and a wonderful thing and I'm back to praying. Again. <laughs> we spent right. a lot of time on our knees, but kids see in the today yeah. So we want them to remain hopeful, mm -hmm. but they can't, yeah, you know, they can't get their hopes up. Does that make sense? Sure. And, and I think that if our hope is in the Lord, we know he will never let us down. Exactly. But if our hope is in a person and, and that can apply to any situation, whether we're talking about an addiction or a life controlling issue exactly. or anything, when we put our hope in a person, we open the door for being disappointed because people right. will fail us. People who love us will fail us. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, it's just a reality, but I feel like kids see things just for how it affects them. Right. You know, and, and it's not, I'm not being critical. It's just kind of who they are. Right. And, and it happens at an early age. The six month old doesn't think, wow, it's the middle of the night. I shouldn't wake up mom. I'll let her sleep in and then I'll cry for <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like it's, just, it's just like all about me. So, you know, does a child think, wow, I wonder how this is affecting my grandmother? Or I wonder, you know what I mean? It, it, right. And it's, it's, it's normal. But as we continue to walk with God, that selfishness, that self, that flesh kind of takes a back seat a little bit, but that takes time to develop that relationship. Right, right. And I think there really has to be a lot of open conversation because some of these kids, uh, my grand, I have grandparents that are going through some big struggles with the kids. As you, as you said about your friend, these kids carry a lot of junk with them um, and a lot of emotion and children don't know what to do with emotion. Like you said, right. when they wake up in the middle of the night, they're not thinking about mom she needs to sleep in because she spent all day working and making my dinner and da, da, da. Yeah. All they're thinking about is this hurts this feels something there's something under the bed and everyone needs to know about it now yeah and and they don't and they let those feelings and fears and memories sometimes memories come in i mean here as adults i mean i'm sure you even do you not sometimes wake up at night with a memory that you thought was gone and all of a oh, sudden yeah. it's there again and you're like lord <laughs> take, take it away and we have to take a little right. prayer because we're mature enough to know how to do that Yes. Kids don't. Mm -hmm. They get that memory, that that flashback. They're trying to decide: was that a real thing? Mm -hmm. Was that a me is that something I made up? And then we have to. Yeah. And sometimes they are made up. They're like from fear, you know. Mm -hmm. And the devil likes to, you know, he comes to seek and destroy, and he's right. going to try to destroy our grandchildren. And the world that we live in right now is a is com you know definitely. So we're battling as grandparents. Now we're battling. You know, we can't be grandparents. We don't get to try to help and fix the person in our life that made us uh, have to take care of these children because we're too busy taking care of the children, picking the pieces. 
Yes. We have to deal with a, a world that we didn't grow up in. So we're old school. We're doing yeah. things the old way. And we have to be sensitive at the same time because our instinct is to want to say, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> this is not how it works. Right. But we have to be sensitive of what they're, you know, they're being fed into. So it's a constant, constant battle. Then the, you know, the, the kids are, then you have other grandchildren you're not raising. And then there's that, that, that uh, jealousy, you wow. know, they yeah. think that she's living in, you know, the best world in the, you know, you get to live with grandma. I mean, how wonderful yeah. is that? You know, yeah. I mean, it's fun times 24 seven. <laughs> yeah. How, and then she's like, uh, really? <laughs> <laughs> um so you know i she misses out on that you know so i have to try to find those times where i can be grandma and we can go and have fun do grandma things yes at the same time it's, it's a constant i mean it's it's a balance it's a balance and what, right. without god it's not possible it really is it really is not possible and i've got grandmas have come into my group who did not have a relationship with the lord they mm -hmm. were word of mouth got them there because you don't have to have a relationship, by the way, everyone out there, you don't have to know God to come to celebrate recovery or come to our group, yes. but you will learn to know him when you get there and mm -hmm. you will be surprised and shocked at you're not alone. And that's the key. Yes. We're not doing this by ourselves. I love it. A while back, I was helping a grandmother. You, you talked about being old school, right? Um, helping a grandmother who was struggling because she was raising her grandchildren and they were trying to do, you know, the quarantine with the computers and the online school. And yeah. it was just extremely frustrating for her. Yes. So that's just one example of kind of that generation gap of it's, it's a different world. It's a very techie world. And you and I didn't grow up in that world. Exactly. And even math. I mean, Simple math is math to right. me. I don't know how come they decided to change it all up when you do yeah. division because it's not that hard. <laughs> you right. know? don't really it change. Be hard. Yeah. It shouldn't be that hard. Amen. But, yeah. And it's hard in your, the relationship. So most of my grandma and grandparents in our group and most grandparents in those statistics you said, the money that we had for retirement, mm -hmm. uh, for traveling and things like that, it's gone. Right. You know, I mean, we were putting back funds to to retire on and now we're thinking of college you mm -hmm. know we're thinking of you know um, weddings and all of the things that should have been done a long time ago right. and we should have so it's gone the funds are depleted there's mm -hmm. not a lot of assistance out there for grandmothers mm -hmm. um, you know foster care things I mean there's also that I mean should I play, should I foster my child grandchild should I take custody of my grandchild? Should I adopt the grandchild? Because all three of those decisions, as simple as it may seem, carry a lot of, of what ifs because, yeah. you know, and resources. Right. You know, we can't always adopt them because you adopt them, it's totally on your own. You yeah. know, I've been blessed by God to have a, a career where I can care for my grandchild, but that's not always that way. I right. mean, it, it's generally not that way. And, yeah. and your retirement's gone. There's no resources to get assistance to help you. Um, a lot, and it, as much as this is going on in the world, there's so many 3 million, I mean, however, grandchildren being raised right. by their grandparents, you try to go find help um, mm -hmm. and, you know, guidance and then, you know, some psychologies and things, that, psychologists and stuff, for these children, it's not that easy. It's not right. that easy because it's one of those un, you know, those undisclosed secrets that we know is out there, but we don't talk about it. Hmm. That's so good because I never really thought about it that way. And with these numbers that we're talking about, there really should be more support right. for those families. So Debbie, you mentioned the retirement. I mean, it's not just the retirement money, but it's you know, when you're, when you're retired or when you're in the season years of life as we are, you're kind of thinking about traveling and, right. you know, doing these things. And that's going to be very limited. Right. When you're, when you're basically starting over with the parenting process. 
Exactly. I mean, it's finding babysitters and should I go on vacation? And, you know, is it usually when you're, you're a young family raising your children, you know, you, it's just common. You just take your grandkids or take your children. I'm sorry. And right. you go on, you go to the beach and go on the vacation. Well, we're at the age where that's something that my husband and I should have done, should be doing by ourselves, but we are taking our grandchild with us because we're back into a season, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and I'm not going to say not by choice, because for us, it was a choice. Okay. Sometimes it's not by choice. Sometimes it's like, you know, you're put in a position where you have to. We really prayed about it. Uh, my husband is, is, has a, is a good man of God and he leads a, a Christian home. Um, so we really prayed about this and mm -hmm. made a choice. Um, and it, it, the first time it happened, it wasn't a choice. It was, it was uh, dropped on your doorstep the first time wow. it happened to me. So and most of the time, it's it's not a choice. I have a grandmother that got a call in the middle of the night and said, um, here's a child that's, you know, and she's, and this child's addicted and mother had the baby and mm -hmm. um, you're the only name we have to call. So she's out in the middle of the night going to the hospital to pick up an addicted child, baby, uh -huh. mm -hmm. and raise it. Um, and, you know, and then she's on the phone with her son. It's like, did you know, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, it, it's uh -huh. just, it's situations sometimes you're you're not you don't have a choice sometimes you're dropped into it mm -hmm. and then a lot of times you've gotten yourself you finally get the kids where you need to have them you, you've been through this and then all of a sudden mom and dad show back up make all these promises again and is this going to happen and then there's a fear should you let it go can you do this mm -hmm. again can you go through this roller coaster so wow that those are those are things i had not thought of as I was looking up the statistics, uh, I read this. Grandparents have to handle false promises that parents make, which could lead to behavioral problems. Yep. So if mom and dad come back into the picture, probably making big promises, uh, and they, they probably mean them, okay? They They're not lying, they, they, they yeah. mean them. And then if you don't allow the grandchild to go with them, it's your fault and, and all of this. But like you said earlier, you're trying to protect the child. That's first and foremost. Right. And uh, again, you re we really need to be seeking the wisdom of God and how to handle these situations that we really didn't plan on. And like that grandma that got the call in the middle of the night, she's got to deal with the consequences of the choices of another person. Exactly. Exactly. And, and that is, that's a complete truth because you know, and, and that is exactly how it ends up working out is that these false pro promises. And I will say, I really do believe the parents and for my situation, my granddaughter, I believe both her mother and father, they want to be okay. They want to be that parent, but they love her and they know that it's not going to just work that easy. You know, sure. they know that. So they make the promises to her that mm -hmm. they're going to do all these wonderful things. And then she's hopeful. And then it's like, well, why do you think they're not doing well, grandma? Why do you think that? I mean, they said this, what, what, you know, yeah. And the false promises and, you know, they do love her. They both love her very much. They're, mm -hmm. they, they, their heart is there. But if you don't love yourself first, mm. you cannot, you can't, I don't think it's possible. I really honestly don't believe that you can possibly share love with another human being if you don't have some love, self self love, in to start with. Sure. Um, and I don't believe you can find self love until you realize that you are loved by something so as powerful and wonderful as a savior. Amen. I don't know how that how that trickle cannot work. And I have not always been a believer. The biggest part of my life, I was not a believer. Mm -hmm. um, so. I see it clearly. It's kind of like well, an ex-smoker, you know, who doesn't want to yeah. be there, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and so I see it mm -hmm. clear, more clearly. Mm -hmm. But these kids, these kids, boy, I'll tell you what, it's a lot of baggage to pick up and clean up. And you're constantly, constantly, as a grandparent, constantly picking up these pieces, constantly mm -hmm. going through and clearing up, you know, sweeping up the damage. It's mm -hmm. almost a daily thing. When you get a day where it's finally just fun and games, you're just like, thank you, Jesus, <laughs> you know? Right. Because typically it's always something mm -hmm. that you're just picking up. 
Wow. That's a lot. So as you say that, Debbie, and I'm thinking about the group uh, where mm-hmm. you're ministering to people who are, who are struggling with these issues we're talking about, the, the grandparents are dealing with either an addicted child or a child who has overdosed mm-hmm. or a child who is in some kind of a mess of, of some sort, right? So right. As, as a mom, you're dealing with that with your child, which is heartbreaking and very heavy and very worrisome. And again, if, if you can't give these things to God, you, you're just kind of stuck dealing with them. And it, I just, I cannot imagine but then on top of that, you know, then you've got to pour into this child with your time and energy and resources and attention. Mm-hmm. You know? So they're really, uh, they're carrying so much. I mean, even if, in, even if, if, if your kids were great and, and life was perfect to be not 25 again, right? You're not, we're not, we're not spring chickens. Okay. okay. But we're, we're, we're seasoned. Okay. Um, you know, to be not, not young and energetic again, but, uh, to be having to, to raise these children in a, in a very different world and then have that heaviness of the worry about your kids. I mean, that is, that's, I I really can't imagine that. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm glad you said that because that's why support groups are so important. Yes. Um, I mean, my, the, the support group that I have is in, in Harrison, Ohio, at at, um, it, it's, it, at um, the Church on Fire. So, right. and we meet on Tuesday nights. So, if you want support, please come in your nearby. Come, but yes. there's other support groups out there. For you sell sure. for them, but it's so important because I can tell you that every single grandparent that is raising a grandchild that has come into my group went through the motions. Their focus was on the kid that was messed up, the Mm -hmm. child, the Mm -hmm. child that overdosed, the child that is in active addiction, the child that has mental disability problems, the Mm -hmm. child that just doesn't feel like being a parent because they want to play or whatever the reason might be. They come into my group and their focus is on that and they're going through the motions of raising the grandchild. So in other words, they got the grandchild in the house. They're making sure the grandchild has roof over their head the grandchild has food, the grandchild has clothes, mm-hmm. they're all there. And then the emotional issues, I'm dealing with your parents. So the kid is sitting there. They don't have their parents. They don't understand why right. they're in their grandparents' house or why their grandparents' yeah. parents have gone. No one's focusing on their thing because ma, grandma is too busy, busy enabling or, co- de- or being codependent mm-hmm. or trying to fix the child. You know, the grown right. adult child. Well, guess yeah. what? I love my children with all of my heart, but they can fix themselves. God, they're in God's hands. Amen. God will fix them. Yes. My thing is we need to get the focus off of that. Mm-hmm. Realize that you're going to have to pray and give that child to God and let God do the work because God has given you now something that is innocent, that has not gotten to the place where they need to be to, or to take full accountability. Right. And that's what we need to do. Break the chain. Yes. Okay. We're going to break the chain right now. We're going to speak in to this child. We're going to speak in life to this child. We're going to speak in faith into this child. We're going to speak accountability into this child. Mm -hmm. We're going to speak into this child, um, you know, um, respect, -respect, self-respect, self-love. And and we're not going to let this child take uh, the easy way out. Right. Do that right. while they're young, so we can break that chain. Doesn't mean I don't love my child. Doesn't okay. mean that I don't pray for my child every night. Amen. But I am busy right now speaking into this child. Yes. To grab the child that you gave birth to, that you've given to me mm. to take care of, that's and that's good. where my focus needs to be. So what I'm going to do for you, my child, is I'm praying for you and I'm giving you over to God, and God okay. will take care of that. Amen. In He's going to put the accountability back into your life where that needs to be there. Right. But we come into this group and we come into this responsibility of raising a child and we're still so focused and totally, you know, uh, being controlled by the, ch- uh, the child, our, our children. Right. You know, and then these children, these grandchildren get lost and the chain's not broken. The mm. chain's strengthened. 
right. then you're going to find yourself in the same position again with a great grandchild. So it's time wow. to break the chain and Amen. not focus on the child. Debbie, that is so, so good. And that is spoken from a mom who's walking it out. Okay. You didn't mm -hmm. read about it in a book. Right. <laughs> You're living it. So right. what I hear you saying is that for these grandparents who are just going through the motions with their grandkids, because they're still so tied to their adult grandchildren or their adult children and their problems, you're saying, give the children over to God and focus on the grandchild. Exactly. Okay. That's how you and break I, the chain. You, you're not just, you're not just cutting them off and saying, I'm done with no, you and whatever. No. You're, you're giving that child to God so that you can focus on the child under your roof. Because like you said, you don't want this to continue into another generation. And I would think that that would be the biggest fear. And I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you know, you don't want this to happen now to your granddaughter. So you're doing everything you can by raising her to know God and to know God's word so that it doesn't continue. Exactly. You know, you've heard, I, I think Charles Swindoll said it a long time ago, but you heard the adage that children learn what they live. Yes. Okay. So when you're giving your child, your adult child over to God, by no means that, that does that mean that you don't love them because actually the most loving thing you can do for your child mm. is to hand them over. Yeah. I was stuck in the place where I was loving my children to death. Mm. I'm not going to love my kids to death. I'm going to love you to life. Yes. And I'm going to do that by handing you over to God because we're adults. You're not going to make me do anything outside of what I want to do. I'm going to make a final choice of anything decision I make in my life. Absolutely. And same with you. Well, it's right. the same with our adult children. We can't make them be okay. We can't make them be, come, you know, buy, get the house and everything's all wonderful and, you know, in Candyland. We can't right. make them do that. What we can do is we can love them enough with the hard stuff. And I hate it when I, you know, I, I know it sounds really cliche to say, you know, that you're going to, um, you know, love them enough to, to, to fix them or whatever. I mean, right. you know, that you don't look... It, it's it's that's not the way it works you know you're not going to walk away from your child right you're walking you know they might not see it they may see it as walking away your child may see it as walking mm -hmm. away that mm -hmm. adult child yeah but it's not it's 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 walking to god and closer so if you break off that chain with that parent with that child that parent adult child that's struggling you mm -hmm. break that chain and and you cut it off there then they have no other resources but to get back up on their feet. And you know, God, and I trust God's going to take care of them. I Amen. know he will, because I have not, I've been on the streets doing the ministries with um, another um, organization I do ministries with. And I'm telling you, right, these girls, these people are resourceful. Mm -hmm. They are fine. You don't have to give them the hamburger. They're fine. They will find one. Mm -hmm. Focus on that child, break that chain. And yeah. show them that love and that self-respect. But so yeah, we're not we're not cutting off our our children, although they think we are. Right. We're not cutting them off. We're mm -hmm. loving them enough to say, it's you know you need to find your way and find your way out of it, and not enabling. Mm -hmm. We can't enable them. That's so good. You know, you talked about we can't fix them, but when we do try, right? Oh, sure. We do try. And that is so exhausting. So okay. I'm just thinking of a grandparent who is trying to fix their adult child as well as raise their grandchildren. I mean, that is just like, I, I can't imagine how physically and mentally exhausting that would be. And I know I interviewed you before uh, yes. with your son, as I mentioned earlier. And one of the things that you talked about, you said, that God told you to give him your son. And you said, mm -hmm. but I have, I've done that. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, you haven't. Right. And that had to be eye opening and a little hard to hear. It was, but yet God loves us so much that he'll tell us things that are, that are difficult, right. In order that we can fix them. Right. So it, it, it you know, it's, it's easier said than done to just break the chain, let your adult children go. But the more you walk with God and the more you trust him, that he is so able 
to yes, do it creatively, abundantly more than we can ask for, imagine, or think about, right? So that that's powerful. Yeah, it's one of the most, it's the hardest thing as a parent that you will ever, ever have to do. Mm -hmm. um, but if you really, and, and you know, we have to not lose ourselves in this either, yes. because we're not just so-and-so's mother and right. some so and so's grandmother. We're Debbie or Michelle. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to take care of us as well. Yeah. We cannot be good caretakers of our grandchildren mm -hmm. um, if we don't take care of us and our right. souls and our hearts. Yes. Now, I have some grandmothers that they, they their life, they love being, raising their grandchild. It, it's, it's just something that's become habit. Mm -hmm. It's good for them till, till the homework start. <laughs> Virtual right. homework and yeah. start. Well, math time. Yeah, but it's working for them. Mm -hmm. but they're, they sometimes hide in that mm. and you can hide in that either as well. So you, you need to be, you know, to be, you need to be in reality, you know, mm. in reality, I have dealt with this. This is something that's, this is real yes. and I need to take care of me and my emotional stability and my emotional um, well-being mm -hmm. in order, to, or you're going to not break that chain and you can't speak that positive into your your grandchildren mm -hmm. and my grandchildren are my world. I mean, mm -hmm. if you can have grandkids first, I'd do it all day long <laughs> <laughs> because they're, they're yeah. amazing. And I just found out that I have another grandchild. So I, I have nine grandchildren now of my own flesh mm -hmm. and blood grandchildren. And I have three step grandchildren and one on the way. So mm -hmm. we're, we're the lucky pe um, uh, people to have, uh, almost 13 grandchildren in our life. And I have two great grandchildren now um, as well. And so being a grandma is wonderful. Yes. And I feel bad for Haley sometimes, or my granddaughter, because I don't get to, I don't, she misses out on just the grandma stuff sometimes. Right. But we have also a very good bond and a one-on-one -on -one time that we spend with each other. Mm -hmm. And um, so I can try to feed that back in, but then I also find that good time where I can say, okay, uh, grandma needs time for grandma and right. grandpa mm -hmm. and um, get in the hot tub, <laughs> whatever you need to do, go right. and meet with your friends, yes. get in a close group with them, um, mm -hmm. go to, that's why the, our groups, um, that yes. my grandparents group is so important. You yep. need time for you to just Bend it out and be you. Right. Absolutely. That's so, so good. Mm -hmm. So what would you say to that person, that grandma or grandpa who is uh, in the trenches like you are and raising, raising a grandchild? Mm -hmm. uh, what would you, I mean, you've already given some phenomenal advice, but I'm just going to kind of give you an opportunity to speak to that person as we, as we wrap up today, Debbie, Okay. as far as just, they're in a tough spot, but um, yeah. What would you say to that person today? What I would say is don't try to do this all by yourself. There are people in, in, out there that can help you and find those support group. Mm -hmm. I would say, trust God. If you don't know God, ask somebody. Because I can tell you that I think that, and I know, and I don't, I don't think, I know, mm. I know that being able to have that extra place, that, um, that quiet place to go and talk to, someone to talk to, who knows everything anyway, and you're able to vent it out, out loud, it doesn't matter what other people think. I mean, there's oftentimes I'll sit in a room and I'll just, God, you know, and talk to him and get it out. Find, mm. find your support. You're not alone. And I know that seems so cliche too to say that because everyone thinks, well, of course you're not alone. There's 3,000 people just in you know your town that's raising their children, yeah. but we still think we're alone. We still, mm -hmm. we still, you know, because we don't want to share that. There isn't a story that you have of why you're raising your grandchildren that um, that we have not heard or don't know. Mm -hmm. It's not your fault. You didn't mm -hmm. mess up as a parent. We have choice, just like you had choices, you know, do things happen in our lives that kind of take us through that? Right. Well, sure, sure. Um, you know, 
but let's break the chain now. You know, as a grandparent, we got the wisdom, break the chain. You still, it's not your fault. It's not your mm -hmm. fault, whatever happened or put you in this position with your own adult children. Mm -hmm. We have choices. You're yeah. responsible for the choices you make. Your mm -hmm. children are responsible for the choices that they make. So don't blame yourself. The blame game is done and over. It's over. Whatever happened in the past is, half, is mm -hmm. in the past. If you look in the rearview mirror, you're going to run off the road. Focus on what's ahead of you and let's fix it. Yes. And just get the help. Reach out to people who care and love you. Um, and, and, you and I know that sounds weird because you might think, well, they don't even know me. It doesn't matter. We will know you. And I can tell you right now, I don't know who you are that's listening. I don't know your name, your situation. But I honestly, 100,000% can tell you that I have a love for you because God has put it in my heart because I know where you're at, know where you've been, and I know where you're going if you don't reach out and get some help. You're not alone. You are loved. If not by me, you're definitely loved by him. Amen. That is said so beautifully, Debbie. And as you were talking about that, uh, the word guilt came up in my, in my heart. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, through your group, you had a little night where you kind of recognize some of the people in your group and and they came forward and and shared and one of the one of the grandmas said i realized that that my son overdosing it's not my fault and just just to be free from the guilt mm -hmm. you know god doesn't want us to carry around a guilty conscience right it, we can we can give these things to god did you make mistakes as a parent did i 100% yes oh, we yeah. did Okay, because and everybody watching did because there's no such thing as a perfect parent other than God yeah. himself, Jesus is, is perfect, right? So we we have made mistakes, and a lot of the mistakes that I made were a result of me not knowing God for a good part of me raising my young children. Me too. So so we have to we have to give it to God because that guilt is so hard to carry. It's it just it can destroy us. It can eat us away. Yes. So, so if you're watching tonight and, and you're carrying that guilt for what, what decisions your child made, you absolutely must give these things to God because you've, you've, like you said, uh, before we started uh, recording, Debbie, you said, I've got bigger fish to fry. Yeah. That guilt and that condemnation will weigh you down. And, and like you said, living by or driving by the rearview mirror will cause you to go off the road. So um, my heart just goes out to people who are dealing with some really heavy things. Mm -hmm. um, and I hope and pray that through these situations that they'll draw near to God and tap into his unlimited love and strength and uh, just trust him, just trust yes. him to help us deal with the things that we're all dealing with. We all are. Yes. Yes. Amen to that. Amen to that. Well, God bless you, Debbie. Uh, you're just such a shining light and you're just such a, a, a beautiful person who loves God and loves other people. And uh, I just, I'm, I'm grateful that you have this support group and, you know, God wastes nothing. He, he, he doesn't, he's using the things that you walk through to help other people walk through those things on their journey. And I just love that. And I appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate you too. Thank you so much, Michelle. It's been wonderful. I appreciate it. And to everyone out there. Um, yeah, just it's, it's good. I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm raising a grandchild, but I'm happy. My life is so blessed. Mm -hmm. um, I am not, I'm not living in fear of my children. Mm -hmm. I know that God's got a plan. It's all good. And mm -hmm. if you want that, reach out because you can have it too. Absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, if you're struggling, reach out to me on the Voices of Recovery page. And I'm sure that Debbie would love to connect with you. There are Celebrate Recovery groups everywhere. And most of them have that support group for family members who are raising grandchildren or dealing with uh, the results of a child being addicted. So um, if you can't find that, reach out to me and we'll get you plugged in. Awesome. Thank you again, Debbie. And Thank I'm you. 
I want to thank our audience for watching this episode of Voices of Recovery. We're creating a safe place where people can go on their journey with God. And if you're new here, I'd love it if you'd give us a like or follow. And if you feel led, please share this message out because I'm sure there's somebody who is dealing with the things that Debbie talked about today. So thank you, Debbie. And thank you everyone for watching. And we'll see you next time on Voices of Recovery. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.